Now I understand <coughs> you guys have been in the Chinese, is that right? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do tonight? Come on. Which one? The time in. Mm. I really don't have a question about it, so if somebody else has something valuable, mm. a question, or a place they want to go in it, that would be great. Because I do enjoy reading. How about this question? How's that? There are two creations, actually three, but two major ones. This is a creation that comes about through necessity. And if it does, if you can give an account of that, would that be giving the logos of necessity in creation. And therefore, the question which is important for this work is, what does he mean by necessity? Well, there's something. It's a necessity. <clears throat> and um, how about checking a look for a few minutes?
And <clears throat> this, of course, is a noose. What do you think? Look here, see? There are two parts. Second hypothesis. Must be so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Necessity. Necessity. Yeah. Strong bonds of necessity will not allow will not allow being to be scattered. Yeah. As if it were something that could be cast in the wind. No. <clears throat> right. So something new is going to emerge, see? Here, here. Hold on a sec. Oh, good. That's it. Okay. That's his intellect and necessity. Okay. And she might also look on the left side of the page occasionally. Yes. And where would I be reading? Where? 48A. Oh, sorry. 48A. Thank you. Brain dead, I didn't get that. How embarrassing. One oh okay dope. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep. The foregoing part of our discourse, save for a small portion has been an exposition of the operations of news. But we must also furnish an account of what comes into existence through necessity. For, in truth, this cosmos in its origin was generated as a compound from the combination of necessity and reason, or noose. And inasmuch as noose, or reason, was controlling necessity by persuading her to, to conduct to the best end the most part of the things coming into existence. Thus and thereby it came about through necessity yielding to intelligent persuasion. There's a, hey, for this stage of creation to go through, there's a struggle between these two. There's a dynamic going hmm. on between these two. Hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, well, keep going. That this universe of ours 
was being in this wise constructed at the beginning. Wherefore, if one is to declare how it actually came into being on this wise, he must include also the form of the errant cause in the way that it really acts. To what, this point, what? therefore... What is it? An errant cause. Yeah. Wandering. Isn't wait, right? What do you make of that? Now she's going to likely look on the left side of the book. Yeah, that's good. Luckily, I was already very sneaky right. and wrote in the Greek over here. It says wandering, roaming, straying. We, you get the word planet from planomenon. Mm -hmm. You get the idea of something that travels, wanders the cycle. Straying from the Um, Is that that womb, that traveling womb? The traveling what? Womb. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that sounds rather... Indelicate. I live right on Placenta Street, but I can handle that. Jeez. Oh, that comes later. Okay. In order to do this, it's an errant cause at work. Yeah. So what's he going to focus on? He's got to focus okay, on that go ahead. errantness. <coughs> to this point, therefore, we must return, and taking once again a fresh starting point suitable to the matter, we must make a fresh start in dealing therewith, just as we did with our previous subjects. We must gain, we must gain a view of the real nature of fire and water, air and earth, as it was before the birth of heaven, and the properties they had before that time. For at present, no one has as yet declared their generation. But we assume that men know what fire is and each of these things, and we call them principles, and presume that they are elements of the universe. Although in truth, they do not so much as deserve to be likened with any likelihood by the man who has even a grain of sense to the class of syllables, for the present, however, let our procedure be as follows. We shall not now expound the principle of all things, or their principles, or whatever term we use concerning them. And that solely for this reason, that it is difficult for us to explain our views while keeping to our present method of exposition. What? Yeah, interesting. What hmm. is he admitting? that he won't be able to explain, it'll be difficult to explain, and therefore he won't be expounding the principle of all things, or principles. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's going to be difficult to explain our view. Yeah. Because we're dealing with this curious, errant cause. Hmm. Hmm. That deals with the so-called elements. Yeah. Which are not elements. Right. They make that pretty clear here. Go ahead. Okay. For the present... Okay. Okay. It will be... So it will be difficult... That it is difficult for us to explain our views while keeping to our present method of exposition. You, therefore, ought not to suppose that I should expound them. While, as for me, I should never be able to convince myself that I should be right in attempting to undertake so great a task. Strictly adhering, then, to what we previously affirmed, the import of the likely account, I will essay, as I did before, to give as likely an exposition as any other. What Nay, this is gonna more be? so. A likely account. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, curious. What is he doing? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Regarding both particular things and the totality of things from the very beginning. Hmm. And as before, so now. At the commencement of our account, we must call upon God the Savior. 
to bring us safe through a novel and unwanted exposition to a conclusion based on likelihood, and thus begin our account once more. To give a likely account, we have to call upon the divine for support. Hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. That's interesting. We need divine assistance for that. Hmm. One would think that a true account would require divine assistance, but they're saying a likely account requires. He kind of contradicts himself. Pierre? When you're done? Pierre, he sort of contradicts himself. He says that necessity could not come about without, in some way, its subjugation to noose. And now he's saying that for us to really understand this, we have to step outside into a world of transformation, change, what did he call it? Um, Aaron, an, an errant world, to explain something which he already said is bound by reason. Yeah. So he's, he's sort of backing off our, our He's saying, to go any further with this exploration, we're not going to be able to do it. We're using our, yes. our usual method. We need a new way of approaching it, a mm. new hmm. logos. Hmm. Okay. And that logos is going to give us a likely account. And we better hope that the gods are on our side. At least we make a mistake in exploring this problem. Why? Because we're dealing with an errant cause. Yeah, hold it. What, what does errant mean? Errant, uh, uh, here it, it comes from wandering. Or, uh, oh, OK. okay. Uh, what would it be? Straying from the straying okay. from the path. This one called this one called and, and that's really right in terms of the Greek. Uh, the word the plan, plan, anything okay. that wanders, yeah. I somehow that, missed that. That moves around. This one calls it intermediate. Really? That's intermediate not a good translation. Okay. Mm. Well no, I'm just saying because it has that whole metaphor of the wanderer, the straying thing. And errant, you know, is I think it's related to air. Right? It's considered errant because it's not in line with what would be most appropriate on, on one way of thinking. And so it's like, um, so it's a, uh, a strain from what? The, st the correct line or something like that? It's not completely in error. Right. But it, it could tend in that direction. It's error. I think it's because. Okay. I hope not. It's the cause of hysteria. It's, 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 it's a wonder. Oh, really? That's not. It's a psychology. Okay. Okay. Do do. Okay. Do you need a couple of more points? Go ahead. Okay. Um, we must, however, in beginning our fresh account of the universe, make more distinctions than we did before. For whereas then we distinguished two forms, we must now declare another third kind. F for our former exposition, these two were sufficient, one of them being assumed as a model form, intelligible and ever uniformly existent, and the second, and the second as the model's copy, subject to becoming and visible. A third kind we did not at that time distinguish, considering that these two were sufficient. But now the argument seems to compel us 
to try to reveal by words a form that is baffling and obscure. And that's logois, right? What essential property then are we to conceive it to possess? This in particular, that it should be the receptacle and as it were the nurse of all becoming. Yet true though this statement is, we must needs describe it more plainly. That, however, is a difficult task, especially because it is necessary for its sake to discuss first the problem of fire and its fellow elements. For in regard to these, it is hard to say which particular element we ought really to term water rather than fire, and which we ought to term any one element rather than each and all of them, while still employing a terminology that okay, is reliable. Just for a second. Where after what? <clears throat> the That's nurse of becoming. Right? Don't lose that idea, right? It's a basic metaphor, right? What's the Greek on nurse? This is particular that it should be the receptacle and as it were, the nurse of all becoming. And we better describe it plainly. Right? This is going to be a difficult task. Why? Okay, pick it up from there. Uh, uh, uh. That, however, is a difficult task, especially because it is necessary for its sake to discuss first the problem of fire and its fellow elements. For in regard to these, it is hard to say which particular element we ought really to term water rather than fire, and which we ought to term any one element rather than each and all of them, while still employing a terminology that is reliable and stable. How then shall we handle this problem? And what likely solution can we offer? First of all, we see that which we now call water becoming by condensation as we believe stones and earth. And again, this same substance by dissolving and dilating becoming breath and air, and air through combustion becoming fire. And conversely, fire, when contracted and quenched, returning back to the form of air, and air once more uniting and condensing into cloud and mist, and issuing from these, when still further compressed, flowing water, and from water, earth and stones again. Thus, we see the elements passing on to one another, as it would seem, in an unbroken broken circle, the gift of birth. Accordingly, since no one of these ever remains identical in appearance, which of them shall a man definitely affirm to be any one particular element and no other without incurring ridicule? None such exists. On the contrary, by far the safest plan in treating of these elements is to proceed thus. Whatsoever object we perceive to be constantly changing from one state to another, like fire, that object, be it fire, we must never describe as this, but as such like. Nor should we ever call water this, but such like. Nor should we describe any other element as though it possessed stability of all those which we indicate by using the terms this and that, and suppose ourselves to refer to a definite object. For such an object shuns and eludes the names this and that, and every name which indicates that they are stable. Thus we must not call the several elements these, but in regard to each of them and all together, we must apply the term such like. Okay. Right. Now he's going to, right, the elements each can pass into the other. So what are you talking about? You're just talking about something that's going through transitions. Well, what is it really? Huh? 
Yeah, well, go ahead. Here it comes. Um, sorry, I lost my. Okay, so uh, thus we must not call the several elements these, but in regard to each of them and all together, we must apply the term such like to represent what is always circling round. Then we shall call that which is constantly such like by the name of fire, and so with everything else that is generated. But that wherein they are always in appearance coming severally into existence and wherefrom in turn they perish, in describing that and that alone shall we ter employ the terms this and that, whereas in describing what is such like hot for instance, or white, or any of the opposite qualities, or any compounds thereof, we ought never to apply to it any of these terms. But we must bestir ourselves to explain this matter again yet more clearly. Now imagine that a man were to model all possible figures out of gold, and were then to proceed without sensation to remodel each of these into every other. Then, if someone were to point to one of the figures and ask what it is, by far the safest reply in point of truth would be that it is gold. But as for the triangle and all the other figures which were formed in it, one should never describe them as being, seeing that they change even while one is mentioning them. Rather, one should be content if the figure admits of even the title, such like, being applied to it with any safety, and of the substance which receives all bodies, the same account must be given. Did you want me to go further, Pierre? Did you want me to read further? Yeah, yes, I just want to. Well, because right... So, what would you say? You're saying that these four elements are not elemental. That's right. That is to say, we, when we study elements at first, they're supposed to be that which does not change. They are elemental. Mm. These are not the idea of elements from our culture because they switch in and out from one another. So what is it really going on? It's something like? Cool. Well then, there's something that hammers on this substance to make it appear like these things. Mm -hmm. I have a difficulty because I would like to say that he really put his finger on what moderns call matter matter in all its forms, whether it's fire, or earth, or air, or water, it's made up of some one thing called, you know, matter, atoms. But, but the problem is that it's not in the realm of matter, it's in a realm that is prior to matter, prior to becoming. It's, it's uh, quantum physics. It's quantum physics, okay. Basically, it's an energy. Only he's saying it's not just an energy, it glitters, it's like gold. And it has a process behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara, go ahead. All right. Okay. Okay, three big ideas. Here we go. Okay, four of the present. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. For the present, then, we must conceive of three kinds. Right. There are three, only we need three ideas. See? There they come. The becoming. Right, because through this all things become. One. Go ahead. That wherein it becomes. Right. So, where... In it becomes. 
and especially the source the source where from the becoming is copied and produced right we got three puzzles these are the called the great ideas okay um, moreover it is proper to liken the recipient to the mother now we're going back to pick up the name the mother the nurse mm -hmm. the source to the right. father and what is engendered between these two to the offspring there you have it right or a triad And the re also, recipient, that is, that which receives it, right? the source, and then is the father. Mm -hmm. And the result, of course, is the child, the offspring. Mm -hmm. What's engendered between these two. This, therefore, is a triad. Yes. And also to perceive that if the stamped copy is to assume diverse appearances of all sorts, that substance wherein it is set and stamped could not possibly be suited to its purpose unless it were itself devoid of all those forms which it is about to receive from any quarter. For were it similar to any of the entering forms, on receiving forms of an opposite or wholly different kind, as they arrived, it would copy them badly through obtruding its own visible shape. Hey, this therefore is pure. No mark. Empty, right? Empty of all signs. Right? <laughs> then what happens? Then the forms, here, well, this is participation. The, then you need the forms that then are imposed upon this, and then all that is generated. Right on, Shorty. Uh, would you go and see whether there's an elephant out there that's... <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Wherefore it is right that the substance which is to receive within itself all the kinds should be void of all forms. Just as with all fra fragrant ointments, men bring about this condition by artistic contrivance and make the liquids which are to receive the odors as odorless as possible. And all who assay to mold figures in any soft material utterly refuse to allow any previous figure to remain visible therein, and begin by making it even and as smooth as possible before they execute the work. So likewise, it is right that the substance which is to be fitted to receive frequently over its whole extent the copies of all things intelligible and eternal should itself of its own nature be void of all those form all the forms wherefore let us now not speak of her that is the mother and receptacle of this generated world which is perceptible by sight and all the senses by the names of earth or air or fire or water or any aggregates or constituents thereof Rather, if you we have just, just described the mother, the nurse of all becoming. Yeah. Hey, it's akin to the primary substance. They're both empty of forms. Go. 
rather, if we describe her as a kind, invisible and unshaped, all receptive, and in some most perplexing and most baffling way, partaking of the intelligible, we shall describe her truly. <laughs> in so far as it is possible to arrive at the nature of this kind from the foregoing account, one may state it most correctly in this way. That part of it which is made fiery appears each time as fire, that which has been liquefied as water, and it appears as earth and air insofar as it receives copies of these. But let us investigate the matter by more exact reasoning and consider this question. Does there exist any self-subsisting fire or any of these other objects which we likewise term self-subsisting realities? Or is it only these things which we see or otherwise perceive by means of bodily senses that exist, possessed of sensible reality? besides which no other things exist anywhere or anyhow. And it is merely an idle assertion of ours that there always exists an intelligible form of every object. Got it? There must be an intelligible form for each object that's stamped on the gold. Go ahead. Whereas it is really nothing more than a verbal phrase. Now, on the one hand, it would be improper to dismiss the question before us without a trial and a verdict, and simply to asseverate that the fact is so, while on the other hand, we ought not to burden a lengthy discourse with another subsidiary argument. If, however, it were possible to disclose briefly some main determining principle, that would best serve our purpose. This, Look this here. now. Pierre, you mentioned that there was an intelligible form of every object, and that seems likely given that we have a source or a father but does that mean they're going to upgrade from from the phrase here where it says and it is merely an idle assertion no. so they're going to take that idle assertion and they're going to like oomph it now we're going to straighten it up cool go ahead watch it this then is the view for which i for my part cast my vote if reason noose and true opinion are two distinct kinds, most certainly these self-subsisting forms do exist, imperceptible by our senses and objects of reason only. Whereas if, as appears to some, true opinion differs in naught from reason, then on the contrary, all the things which we perceive by our bodily senses must be judged to be most stable. Now these two kinds must be declared to be two because they have come into existence separately and are unlike in condition. For the one of them arises in us by teaching, the other by persuasion. And the one is always in company with true reasoning. With true logos. True logos. Whereas the other is irrational, all logos, without logos. And the one is immovable by persuasion, whereas the other is alterable by persuasion. And of the one, we must assert that every man partakes, but that of noose or reason, only the gods and but a small class of men. This being so, we must agree that one kind is the self-identical form, ungenerated and indestructible neither receiving into itself any other from any quarter, nor itself passing any whither into another, invisible and in all ways imperceptible by sense, it being the object which is the province of reason to contemplate. 
and a second kind is that which is named after the former and similar thereto, an object perceptible by sense, generated ever, ever, sorry. And a second kind is that which is named after the former and similar thereto, an object perceptible by sense, generated, ever carried about, becoming in a place and out of it again perishing, apprehensible by opinion with the aid of sensation. And a third kind is ever existing place, which admits not of destruction and provides room for all things that have birth, itself being apprehensible by a kind of bastard reasoning by the aid of non-sensation, barely an object of belief. For when we regard this, we dimly dream and affirm that it is somehow necessary that all that exists should exist in some spot and occupying some place, and that that which is neither on earth nor anywhere in the heaven is nothing. So, so because okay. of all these okay. and other okay. kindred okay. notions. Okay, hold on. Mm. Um, are you familiar with some of the words on the left hand side? Yes, I am. Oh. Although I wasn't able to view many of them. Yeah, well, uh, exactly at 52A, let's stop and see what he is really saying. Hmm. You mean the self-identical form? Yes. Yeah. It is, in fact, the form that's holding or continuing the ADOS that is continuing according to the same. The, the, the same what are right? you talking about? Well, I think he's talking about the self that is what? the same. <laughs> the idea of the self is in the Chinese? Why, it looks like it. Well, that was a surprise. <laughs> Only to me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What role does it play in this? Hmm. Well, it's the und it's it's that form um, which holds according to the the self, or cont or is according to the self. Um, it is the that form is ungenerated and indestructible. Place. How is place related to self? Let's see. Well, it also. Well, there's the self word in there. All I have to do is figure out what it's doing there. It, it, it's at rest, and there's no, no change in it. Nothing comes into it or goes out of it. So it's, 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 at, it's at rest and in status. Where would you put that in the parameters? Uh, first, second, first. That's what's going on. Hmm. Cool. So let's get it. Come on. Let's go back in it. Let's get the idea of self. Are you talking about consciousness? Right? Don't you want to retranslate that? Because it's screwed up the way it is in English. Yeah, I suggested according to the same, but he was pointing out the selfness of it all. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. And I, we thank I you have for to, it. We have to go further to, for me to ask this question, so let's do it. But we're going to go back to this point. All right, let's go. Okay. Finish it. So because of all these and kin other kindred See, notions? Uh, Um, this self uh, look at the way he describes it right is it also pure by that I mean it doesn't receive anything and it doesn't affect it by anything, right? Is that right? Yes. Come on. And it's Ungenerated, indestructible, 
that doesn't receive into itself any other form, right? Mm -hmm. Or from any quarter, that doesn't pass in and out of anything, it's invisible, right? It's not perceptible, imperceptible by sense. Hey, what is it? It's being the object which is the provenance of news to contemplate. This is the object of contemplation. Noesis, yeah. Watch what he says. Now look here. And a third kind is ever existing place. My question before, how is the self related to place? Mm -hmm. Which admits not of destruction, provides room for all things to have birth, itself being apprehensible by a kind of bastard reasoning, by a kind of non-sensation, it's barely an object of belief. For when we regard this, we dimly dream and affirm that it's somehow necessary that all that exists should exist in some spot, in some place, Do you see the auto there, Dave? Auto de, B1. I don't know if that's what. Okay, now here comes the hard part, right? Curious as it is, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead. Yeah. So, so because of these? Okay, so because of all these and other kindred notions, we are, we are unable also on waking up to distinguish clearly the unsleeping and truly subsisting substance owing to our dream state. What is that? Seems kind of interesting. Okay, I'll go back. So, be, so because of all these and other kindred notions, we are unable also on waking up to distinguish clearly the unsleeping and truly subsisting substance owing to our dreamy condition or to state the truth, how that it belongs to a copy seeing that it has not for its own even that substance for which it came into being, but fleets ever as a phantom of something else to come into existence in some other thing, clinging to usia, to existence, as best it may, on pain of being nothing at all, whereas to the aid of the really existent, antos anti, there comes the accurately true argument that so long as one thing is one thing and another something different, neither of the two will ever come to exist in the other so that the same thing becomes simultaneously both one and two. Now he summarizes, now he comes to his grand conclusion and let's look at that, okay? Here we go. Let this then be, according to my verdict, a reasoned account of the matter summarily stated that being and place and becoming were existing three distinct things even before the heaven came into existence and that the nurse of becoming being liquefied and ignified and receiving also the forms of earth and air and submitting to all the other affections which accompany these exhibits every variety of appearance but owing to being filled with potencies that are neither similar nor balanced, in no part of herself is she equally balanced, but sways unevenly in every part, and is herself shaken by these forms, and shakes them in turn as she is moved. And the forms, as they are moved, fly continually in various directions, and are dissipated, just as the particles that are shaken and winnowed by the sieves and other instruments used for the cleansing of corn 
fall into one place if they are solid and heavy, but fly off and settle elsewhere if they are spongy and light. So it was also with the four kinds when shaken by the recipient. Her motion, like an instrument which causes shaking, was separating farthest from one another the dissimilar, and pushing most closely together the similar. Whereas also, wherefore also these kinds occupied different places even before that the universe was organized and generated out of them. Before that time, in truth, all these things were in a state devoid of reason or measure. But when the work of settling in, setting in order this universe was being undertaken, fire and water and earth and air, although possessing some traces of their own nature, were yet so disposed as everything is likely to be in the absence of God. And inasmuch as this was then their natural condition, God began by first marking them out into shapes by means of form, forms and numbers, and that God constructed them as so far as he could to be as fair and good as possible, whereas they had been otherwise, this above all else must always be postulated in our account. Now, however, it is the disposition and origin of each of these kinds which I must endeavor to explain to you in an exposition of an unusual type. Yet, inasmuch as you have some acquaintance with the technical method which I must necessarily employ in my exposition, you will follow me. Okay. Interesting? Interesting. So, let's go back to the great quote on 52. And now I can ask you a more sophisticated question. <coughs> what is the role of the self and the time is? Hmm. Right, only the gods and only a few men grasp this. Mm -hmm. And don't you want to be among them? Well, this is it. So the self is like the condition for all. Now, see, this brings the great question of how do you translate Eidos? The right? question was, what this is, is the an role ancient of problem self? that goes all over translations and especially Jowett. Hmm. So take a look at the phrase. Oh, well. At Eidos 52, take a look. You know, I see it. it, it that's the Eidos Katatauta, right? To Ekhon Eidos. That which holds. Well, it, Look here, let's 52 do 52A, exactly. Oh, it's um, that uh, this being so, we must agree that one kind is the self-identical form, um, ungenerated and indestructible, neither receiving into itself any other from any quarter, nor itself passing any wither into well, another. We want to know, and we want to know, is there a better way to use, to translate this line? Hmm. This being the case, right. hexon is what? I have or possess? Possess right. or this hold. This being the mm -hmm. case, Pardon? it must be agreed that the one is an idea of, of, by means of the self. Hmm. One's yeah. an idea by means of the self. Come on, that's one. Come on. <laughs> That's one. Okay, that's one. Barbara, you're on. No, I haven't got one yet. I can't be on. This is the heart of the work. Baffling. Strange. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the Greek is very easy. Hmm.
Mm. Interesting. And by idea, you mean be held? Okay, I'll go for it. I thought you did okay with it. I mean, you, you, I think you said by means of, by according means to, of. with respect to, it's not usually. Okay. Should, means what? of self. You mean, you know, uh, there's where hmm. truth is what I mean, this way. Hmm. Well, what about that? Yeah. It, it, how about it's the principle by that underlie? I was wondering whether it was the condition. Yeah, that, that's, that's what by means of means. Hmm. And but looking at the first hypothesis, I would like to say alongside, together with. But that's so it's an idea together with the self. One is an idea together with the self. Oh. Hmm. Now, what do you make of this word? This is the, it's fundamental. Where does it come from? Why couldn't it be concept? How does it relate to this English word? What is the range of possible, see, what is the range of, of Well, whatever you use, how does that, among the possible translations, how does that relate to the rest? A form, the word form puts it in that tradition of Platonic thought that is so annoying. It could, a form is nothing more than a concept. When we say Plato has forms, aren't we saying that he has a world of ideas, a world of thought? But see, that's an Englishized reading of this. Well, there, there's a little right. difference. There's a little difference. Idea. Idea is the I, I, English. Ados is actually a different word. No. And this lexicon is telling me that ados is um, related to ado. And that ado means to know. It's from oida, right? Which is kind of interesting. Just like idea comes from idain to see, no. it's saying that ados comes from ado. Which, and it, it does give as the first see. class of meaning that which is seen, but form, shape, it what, does give. See, what kind of seeing is this? You're quite right. Well, I mean, it says it's invisible, so it's not, obviously, it's not sense, sensate. Right. It can't right. be sensitive. It can't be sensitive. Right. Sensitive. So that's a, we have to lift that, this word into its metaphysical component. 
Hmm. It can't have a shape or a form. It cannot be a form or a shape. How about this one? To see, you can elevate it by saying, to behold. Is that elevating to see? Sure. Right? Oh, how will that help this quote? What is he saying then? Well, that it's a seeing of or beholding of uh, that which holds according to the self, that which. Your turn. Uh, well, I want to play you're with it. Okay. Okay. I'm just thinking according. I don't like according to the self. That's why. I'm, that's the kata thing. If you're seeing with beauty, you have to be beautiful. If you're seeing with purity, you have to be pure. If you're seeing with whatever concept you have, you have to know what it means inside. Sure. Sure. And that may be what's going on here. In David's translation, he has this being the case, it must be agreed that one stands as, as a seeing of beholding by means of self. So if, if one is pure, then it's by the idea or seeing or grasping that you do it by self, if I'm understanding what David's writing. Well, you got to change it. You got You've got to add. I already did. I already said it. I don't know what I'd add. Cross out idea and put in the yeah. proper word. Oh, okay. <laughs> For a plan, right? If you go to the conclusion, brother, let's put it up. Cross right? out idea. And that was just good. Barbara, by the way, that was a monumental contribution. Well, I like that contribution. Do you want to look at kata? It's rather interesting. Um, well, yeah. You know what I mean. It's like, damn. You can use the command key to command plus to get it bigger if you want it bigger. Is it puzzling? Is it puzzling? I like the throughout idea. That's kind of interesting. You heard, Pierre, did, did, did you, you heard that there is a distinction between idea, which has its root in seeing, yeah. and ados, which, ados, which has its root in knowing. And knowing. There are two differences. Yeah. yeah. And so when you say behold, well, it, seem, it seems like we're working our way to, um, at, at the very least, an experience of beholding the brilliant light of being. At the very least, there might be a beholding of that. And I say that, or a beholding of the self without qualities. But that beholding isn't a, of a visible object, but rather of some kind of objectless knowing. Yes. Does he use the idea in the translation of brilliant light? Yes. So in different places, yeah. Oh, and definitely, and he has the gold as well as the image. Yep, he does. And some of the, th it's very untranslated, the, the light image. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, kata can be translated throughout, Pierre. And if you translate it throughout, then you have throughout the self, or like, so there's a scope issue, like that it's, um, you're seeing, the knowing or the seeing is, or the beholding is of that which is throughout. I mean, of this, of this uh, pervasive uh, stuff. Possess, uh, Hey, knowing of the self. Yes. Uh huh. A, a knowing that is throughout the self. Like a. Well, that would be 
It might also be in conform in conform in conformity with the self and even by the favor of the self, as in by the favor of the gods. Those are those are, those are two obscure katas. In conformity in with conformity the, with suggests that the, the knowing, the knower is in the same state as the known, or the seeing, right? I mean, that it's self-seeing self, doesn't it? Well, like becomes it's rather like important. The <laughs> I'm sorry, Jules, you That's said? Uh, becoming one with the object of your knowing, that idea. Mm. Which is one of the goals. Possible, right, if it's in conformity with the self? <clears throat> Because there has to be two to tango, you know? <laughs> so. becoming, becoming like? Thanks. Yes, you can. But I don't. You can? Okay. You can. No, you can't. This is Artemis. We did not agree that he's now going to describe this. Okay. Yes, 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 hey, yes. Ungenerated. Mm hmm. Imperishable. Ah, that's rather curious. Mm hmm. Right? It doesn't receive anything to itself. It's yep. pure. Yep. What should it be? If it's, you keep all of these qualities together, and you're talking about the self in those terms, he's saying, that's what you meditate on. That's what you contemplate. Mm -hmm. This is your contemplation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting? Yeah. Hmm. Would you agree this section needs a new translation? <laughs> <laughs> As does everything you put your hands on. <laughs> We put our minds. Okay. In. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we gave him a standing ovation today. Yeah. Well, I, I said, "Why don't we?" Because he was concluding the Parmenides session.